Yeah, so it's uh, John Rob here with the uh, latest interview for uh, Lockdown for Underground Shoes. And uh, today's interview is with Aaron Starkey from Slow Readers Club. So how is the lockdown treating you, Aaron? Uh, it's okay. I mean, we've, we've been trying to find new... Um, from, uh, from a band perspective, we've been trying to find new ways of doing stuff together. So we've like um, essentially been recording different versions of our tracks from our new album mostly and uh, sharing those on social media like you know but I mean I think everybody when you see the video out there they assume that we're all performing at the same time but it's done in a conventional process of recording in a studio like you're each taking your turn if you know what I mean so David and uh, and Jim will lay down the drum and bass first most of the time Get will do his guitar and I'll do vocals and I've done one piano on one of them but um yeah, it's been cool, and, and those have been really great to stay connected with the fans and keep people entertained and all that kind of stuff. Because we were supposed to be out on tour and everything, so um, yeah, it's just a way of, of keeping in the loop, I suppose. So how are you doing that? Are you sending the files backwards and forwards, working on something like Logic Pro at home? And yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. We've we've got um, we we just shoot the video on our phones, and then um, I think the guys have got like Kurt's got Reaper, I think. For his audio and I'm not sure what Jim's setup is but I don't think it's the same as well but I've got I've got Logic on mine so I'll sort of pull it, all the audio together and mix the audio and then my wife is in sort of TV and anyway she works at Software Union does video stuff anyway so it's good to have her on hand in the house and she puts it all together basically and then yeah we stick it out online and they've, they've been going down really well and mm-hmm. um, we've done like Twitter, let's, let's, Twitter listening parties and stuff like that with Tim Burgess and stuff there and did a United We Stream thing as well for like uh, Andy Burnham and um, Sasha Lord, that, that was pretty cool. And um, so yeah, we're just trying to keep busy and keep saying. But I've been, I'd, I'd, it's been great spending so much time with the kids as well, and getting out in the sun, sunshine in the back garden and everything. Just hoping we can sort of stay afloat financially until we, until we're back out on the road again. But yeah, that's the thing. Isn't it? If if you're in a band or creative, the technology is amazing. But it's just, it's actually, you could do all this stuff, but you're actually sat there. Losing money. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you got to the point now when you're actually doing this and you send the files backwards and forwards and you mix it home? And Logic Pro is amazing, isn't it? The quality yeah, of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you got to the point yet you're thinking, well, why did we ever go to studios? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that. Certainly for, for demoing purposes. I think on the last album we we, bar- we demoed in, in Berry at Edwin Street and then before we went to Par Street in Liverpool. So I think possibly, we might, and, and even, even with the writing process, we might sort of, of we're, we're forced at the moment to, if, when we're writing new material, if, depending on how long this goes on, we might, we normally would jam to come up with something. I mean, the odd time I've come up with something at home, but uh, by and large, like 99.9% of the time, we're, we're jamming together to write. So um, um, it, it may be that we have to sort of go, you know, it might be like, right, well, David, you kick us off this time and, play a drum beat and we'll see what comes up or I'll have a chord sequence on the piano and a vocal melody and then kit send that around or whatever. But um, as yet, we haven't come to that point. I think we'll still, I think we'd all rather still be in a room together. So we'll see how long it lasts. But if it, you know, if it gets, you know, if it, in a month's time, if we're still in the situation, then we might have to just start writing like that, I guess. Would you do with, the, new, like, like this, you know, just... It's, it's uh, of, yeah, it's, there's too much latency, like, and, and they can't, it can't handle to do... Yeah two bits of audio at the same time we'd love to unless there's a, there might be some software out there that does it somebody will make a killing when they do if they do invent it that's for sure <laughs> but um but yeah but at the moment we haven't found technology that can that can handle multiple source, sources of audio and stuff at the same time and without any lack so yeah it's a weird side product of this period that, um for technology music we've been forced to jump 10 years into the future not our choice but suddenly we'd have to work in this way which we probably would have been in 10 years time yeah, yeah. Well, I think I mean that uh, certainly in the creative industries. I mean, I used to be a designer for, as my day job, and there was a big push to um, for, for remote working both here and in the US. And there was like a thing called Envision that allowed for that. It's like collaborative mo- boards where people could share ideas and um, you could post a version of work, work, and multiple people could mark it up and all that kind of stuff. So I think that is this precedent for it in in, a, in other industries, and pe- maybe they've they've moved further along with it. And I'm sure artists collaborate like this, you know, um, which is something we might do as well as doing the live, the, the um, lockdown videos that we've done, we might involve other musicians and things like that, which we haven't done before. So like, I think there are 
interesting things coming out of this period um, that wouldn't ordinarily have, have done. I think as well, like socially, I think the, um, it'll be interesting to see because we were sort of moving towards a sort of uh, self-serving sort of right-wing populist sort of position, whether, whether we'll all be a bit more caring about one another and uh, there'll be more scrutiny on people with extreme wealth and stuff like that. I, I, I it so. certainly feels that way. It feels that way to me. I, I feel like, um, because obviously like, he was a government minister called, called out footballers and Wayne Rooney quite rightly re- responded saying, well, let's shine that light on hedge fund managers and everything else as well, you know, and like, it, it yeah. does feel like, that. and all the celebrity culture and everything else, you know, like everything, the people that we value and hold up on a pedestal and everything else. Mm. Yeah, it's all that value system is being questioned at the minute, isn't it? So it's, uh, yeah, been an interesting time to see what, that see what comes out the other end. Got embraced by everybody instead of a few people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so have you actually written any new songs at all in this period? No, there's been bits of ideas, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I've got the, I've got a five year old daughter and a, a nine year old son that are in the house all the time. So, like, um, uh, I personally like from my writing from my perspective, I, I find pockets of time, and it's usually like that anyway. Bits of inspiration will come when they come. So, like the other morning, for example, I just stuck the kettle on and I went and sat down at the piano and just to fill the time, and then something came in that moment, and I recorded it, and we. We tend to share little bits of ideas on WhatsApp groups, so I, I, it's very rare. I think there was a there was a time on the Cavalcade album where we took some time off work and did a dedicated two days of writing. It was really productive, but by and large, it just come it comes or it'll come. Mm-hmm. You know, you go into practice one day and nothing really will happen. You go into practice another day and five or six ideas will come out. So, so it's one of those. But yeah, I've just been trying to find while we're at home little bits of little bits of time I'll just find myself at the piano at a point or pick up the guitar at a point and that's that's how it's worked so far but there's nothing there's not a complete track come out I think it's it's a it's politic, politically weird that as well because obviously then you sort of semi writing solo in that scenario whereas we not we normally write collaboratively so it's better just to go start a little idea rather than doing the, you know trying to do the full thing you know what I mean I mean, do you find it's affecting you? I mean, it's very obviously only little ideas, but do they mm. sound different? Are they more uh, introspective? Or oh, I don't know. I, I, I think if anything, we've done a, a lot of sort of doom laden, apocalyptic stuff. Anyway, it's got, it's quite a weird one to suddenly be in that that be a reality, you know. Um, so I don't know. I, I, they've, they've been brighter, maybe. I think. I, I think. I certainly, in terms of our concert, like when we talk about the sort of five things that are getting us through, but I, I gravitate to lighter stuff at the moment. Like, I, I, I mean, whether it be music or TV or whatever, I'm like, I still watch, I mean, I still watch serious stuff, I suppose, but yeah, I, don't, I think I, would, I wouldn't listen to Mur- Murder Capital at the moment, for example. I would probably more listen, likely listen to Spin or to The Big Moon or something like that. But, um, but that might pass once we're, once we're into sort of this feels like normality then you'll, you'll probably listen to what you normally listen to I suppose yeah which brings us to the um, the culture that's getting you through the lockdown start with music so um, obviously it hasn't settled down yet but what things you've found the last couple of weeks that you've been sort of gravitating towards yeah I think, but like I say it's the lighter stuff really I think um, there's a few bands that have been sort of there was Spin that supported us uh, at the end of last year who were really sort of nice jangly sort of pop uh, band. I don't, I don't know if they're from Liverpool, but they're they're signed to Modern Sky as well. Our, our label, um, young kids like really de- like creative, like delicate um, instrumental stuff, like loads of room in the sort of arrangements and everything. I like their stuff. And then these Laddams that have just been signed to Ireland. Um, they are they like sort of house Martins? He sort of vocal vocally anyway, and like Smithy guitar and that. They're they're, they're really cool. Um, and then his Big Moon, who get, had a lot of uh, play on Six Music and everything, everything, really like them, really beautiful sort of stacked harmonies and everything else. They're, they're cool. But I, I mean, I, try, I kind of, I find Spotify useful for discovery for that kind of thing, because I'll get into one of those artists and then either listen to the radio off them or, or see, you know, related artists and stuff like that. And I used to listen, to, when I was in work, I'm more so than now, I'd listen to, we'd all listen to sort of Six Music every day and everything, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. I'm introduced, trying to introduce my kids to to, to stuff that I've, I grew up with and, and, and loved as well, like, um, you know, Michael Jackson, controversially, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and ABBA and the Beatles, all the, the, you know, the big stuff. Um, 
but it's yeah, my son like drums and stuff as, as well, and my daughter sit, daughter's just started singing and everything. So it's great to be able to share share that kind of stuff with them and see what resonates with them. That's interesting because they obviously because do you find you're sort of gravitating yourself sometimes back towards the music from the pre-virus days? You know, the big yeah. warm for the Beatles in the sixties is a place to escape to. Does yeah, that, yeah. Does that work? Yeah, I think totally. I, 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 I mean, I've, I've always liked that kind of, like, you know, Bee Gees and Abba and all that. Really sort of, of sort of big, melodic pop anyway. Um, but yeah, like, and the, the, it's, it's a weird, I, I found myself looking through old photos as well, just because they were on my Google Drive and, and looking at, um, in more detail, at my childhood photos and everything. I think I've probably got an over-nostalgic, brain anyway half the time I thought of my music it, like lyrically I'm sort of anchoring back to that time and uh, the sort of loss of innocence and childhood and, and a period where you have no responsibility and everything but um yeah I think it uh, I think there's still room for the, the darker stuff as well but I'm I'm finding I'm personally anyway listening to to the lighter side of things at the minute yeah, if, if you if you want mm. dystopia, you just go for walking town. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> seen some amazing photos from town actually, like just completely deserted. I, I envy the people that live in town in a way at the minute because oh, like I, see, I, seeing it completely I, deserted is mad. Right? Yeah, it's quite some mad. Yeah, little corners of it. You can you can go down Deansgate. There's no cars on it. But you go around the corner to Castfield, and there's loads of people sat around. So it's, uh, right. it's a weird combination. It's uh, pockets of people, lots of weird. Right. Yeah, because yeah, there's still. So I guess there's still people that are still having to work in in the office. I suppose. But, uh, flats, just trying to find somewhere to sit. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So so when you, so it's nostalgia got a different kind of edge to it now, whereas once it would be sort of an interesting addition to life but is it now is it a place to escape to i think so yeah i think it's um i mean it's a, I, we're, we're very we're lucky in a way because we've got like people I, I feel for people that are, uh, are on their own and stuff at these kinds of times but we have like i say the kids are up all up and around all the time and um so it's only like into the evening there where we get some time to chill out and that name the message so um you find you occupied and, and the thing is with the band we've still been pretty productive in this period whether it's the lockdown videos or promoting the album on social media because it was obviously it came it was released at the beginning of um all of this so um yeah we've I've been i've kept fairly busy but also enjoyed the sort of downtime as well like i've never really had a period in my life like before we went full-time with the band i was doing a nine-five job and then we were touring on top of that and everything else and writing and recording Whereas this, this feels like probably the first time since I was a student, probably where I've had a volume of time to sit down oh, and <laughs> just let your mind, let your mind wander or whatever. If you can keep yourself yeah. off the, off your phone, you know. <laughs> so it, with the album, was it frustrating or was it was it just a really bizarre thing? Because you virtually came out the week this all kicked off big style. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was one of those. You sort of really just ex had to accept the reality of it. It was. I remember when the sort of the decision was made to pull the tour. And that's quite, you know, it, we saw it coming a mile off, you know, obviously, because things were happening in Europe and everything else. And uh, it was gutting, but it was like broad, more broadly, you've got to go, well, mm-hmm. we've got to keep, keep, our, keep ourselves safe and everything else. There's bigger issues than an indie band from Manchester having an album out, I suppose. But uh, it was great. I mean, in a, on the one hand, it was, it was bad, but on the other hand, it sort of, with the album was going to come out immediately before we started touring whereas now people have had time to live with it and digest it and um and it's been gone it's gone down great and obviously like we had our first top 10 number nine in the album chart so it was amazing but i, I don't know whether there was because we had a load of in-stores planned out for that week and gigs on the on the week of release which we might have we may have sold more records but i think there was an element of people recognizing that without us being having the begging bowl out necessarily but i think people recognized the change in situation and, pick, and picked up on it and might have bought an extra copy or told the mates about us. So um, it's hard to know whether we benefited from it or, or not, really. But it's interesting. we'd rather be touring, that's for sure. <laughs> but we are where we are, you know. It's interesting you mention the way people listen to the record because, like you, you sat at home and you, you've got your musical journey you're on. But for the fans of the band, this it's an intense musical journey with a band you really like, with an yeah. album that's come out. Maybe, maybe normally people listen one or two times to go back to a week later. 
But um, what Carrie actually get? You, you get people just like listen to it over and over again because they haven't actually got anything else to do. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got. I'm sure, like every other band, we've got varying degrees of um, the hardcore. We've got the hardcore fans that will listen to it again and again and again. And then there's some like, um, like there was a lot of I was speaking to online today that's had listened to all four four albums. But it was his birthday and listened to all four albums in the day and all that. And, I, and that's amazing. Uh, but there'll be other people that are more casual fans that. are that are just, you know, like the you odd know, single and, and, and that's it. And, and, and maybe we'll give it four tracks and then move on. But I certainly, I think mu people's musical habits, the, uh, like listening habits these days tend to be more that, that this sort of, it's more transitory because it's so available and you can just go, oh, I've heard, I've heard of them. People have mentioned them four or five times. I'll go and check them out. And they might check out two tracks. And so it's a, it's a, it's a thing to try and stick with people, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously we are doing, people are coming to shows and all that kind of thing. So, and we've got like a decent number of followers on Spotify and all that kind of thing, which is what maybe the measuring stick that people have these days. So. But uh, yeah, it's, I think um, it's been, it's, it's good. I think people have, I'd like to say, people have had time to absorb it. People have, had, have been very complimentary about the, the music and the lyrics and all that. And it, and it's, it's good to be able to do, you know, be four albums in and still find things to say that, uh, you know, some of it probably be uh, uh, rehearsing the same themes as I have before, maybe, or crystallised in, in some areas. But yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's a privilege to be able to put music out in the world anyway, in it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, to, have, to have the idea that people are into it. It's great. So. Do you think the role of a musician has changed now, in this, now we're in the uh, lockdown? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, I talked about the lockdown thing, the, the lockdown videos before. I've seen every, you know, bands at every level uh, 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 doing that kind of thing. And, you know, and it's been quite weird. Uh, the, the, the webcam or your phone, iPhone camera is democratising, <laughs> you know. It sort of makes them look like less like godlike. And they're sort of, you know, they're sat in like in environments like you and I are now. Um, and they just seem more human. And I think that, that connection is a bit, has been really good. I, 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 I do like the, the fact that people have been, you know, bands have been taking requests and all that kind of stuff, and they're doing it to. It's not. I don't think it's a co cold commercial thing. I think it's they're just wanting to go bring some joy to people and and feel as though that you know they're getting the something like the buzz that they had when they're performing live and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's just a new way of that that uh, transaction between the uh, artist and audience working, I suppose. Um, hopefully it'll go back to the way, to the way it was before where we do shows and everything. But I think there will be an element of, of what people, the, the methods that people have adopted now mm. happening more, more in the future. I think people will stay with some of it until, you know, until it's the point that he's fatigued and nobody wants to see a guy in his <laughs> pajamas playing the guitar anymore. I, don't know. <laughs> I think it'll be, uh, there'll be a lot of live casting of gigs, a lot more, access like you know like these kind of situations or where maybe the hardcore fans get time to speak to people like this digital yeah yeah, yeah. it's mad i did um i just one of one of our fans asked me to sort of come in join a zoom conversation for someone's birthday the other day and i did i did that was mad because it's like it's like it's 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 one of those where you were where i've not seen that many people and then suddenly i was in a situation yeah. where there's like 20 or people, 20 or people in the Zoom call, and it's like oh, it's nice to see so many faces, you know. Um, so it's good for it. I mean, it's good for us as well, like that kind of thing. I don't, I, but we're all at some, I've been, I didn't heard of Zoom before this, before all this, all this period. So, yes, it's uh, been interesting. Yeah, I interviewed somebody yesterday, uh, the author Ian Rankin, and I was the first person oh, cool. he's spoken to a scene apart from his wife, about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> People are living in these kind of really weird, weird hermetic existences now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's mad. It's, 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 quite an, it's a challenge to, uh, to not really irritate one another beyond belief, I think. I def I'm definitely getting under, under my wife's skin at the minute, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, other cultural things, are, are you reading much? Um, well, I've got, a, I've got a stack here, actually. So I can... I can I, but... Uh, I'm, uh, the last book I read was Bernard Sumner's chapter and verse, and that was on the t on the last tour, mm -hmm. which is a great book. There's some really interesting. I really found his childhood interesting, actually, like him growing up in Salford and his mum having cerebral palsy and all that kind of stuff, and the sort of challenges he faced with all that. Um, and then later on, I was it was proper rock and roll, like you know, 
going out partying and all that with um, uh, what's his name now, John Ma. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot his name for a minute. Um, yeah, like you know, it was. Uh, yeah, I think when they were doing electronic all that kind of period, and they were out in New York and all that kind of stuff, and now it was things were you know interviews weren't happening as they should because they were partying too much and all that kind of thing. I thought, I thought that was a really interesting. But um, I don't really read a lot of um, music books. I mean, there's one, the Lack of Lennon biography as well, that I've read a while back. And I've got, like, uh, Tim Burgess's book, and, I, and that's part of my pile of shame of stuff that I've not really got through. But when I was at uni, I'd like, I was more like, like dystopian stuff. Everybody's read 1984. Um, Steppenwolf and uh, Unbearable Likeness of Being, sort of uh, existential stuff. Uh, and this is the one I've got next, which I was really attracted to the cover, which is uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, that looks. I mean, I start, started reading it. It's a bit more of like an encyclopedic um, record of every pop record ever, kind of thing. Which is a bit. I don't know whether I'll get. I, I, I'll read that. Whether I'll sort of do it in some small, small chunks. But I, I'm hoping that that'll be a, a bit of a source of inspiration for subject matter and stuff like that as well. You know, like because sometimes that's a challenge when you're sort of writing a lot of personal stuff or you're writing about the political environment, it's like maybe maybe there's something else out there, that, you know, at the starting points. Because I, um, I remember seeing an interview with the Bee Gees where Barry Gibb was like, he'd, he'd just come up with titles and he'd write titles down and then write, write from that point, which I thought was mad because I've never, I've, I've never been able to do that. Um, but yeah, so like it might, there might be some stuff in there that I can and learn from. But I, I mean, my, most of my reading is reading the news and you know and yeah. uh, thought the yeah, opinion pieces on on the, obviously all the news is coronavirus at the moment, isn't it as well? But uh, it's, it's been two. I found there's been two approaches to this. Some people get completely. 24 hours a day in the news, just desperately trying to find some good news or wallowing in the bad news even. Or some people just switch yeah. it off completely, just, they just don't want to know anything. So yeah. are, you, are you, which one are you leaning towards? I'm go I've gone towards, I mean, I've always been a bit of a news junkie and politics junkie, but um, like a news night, qu question time and all that kind of thing. And occasionally sort of BBC Parliament as well when I'm really boring. But um, I've, at the moment, I'm probably hiding from it. Because it, 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 all it seems to be is, raising statistics uh we are doing this and and people say you know there isn't a whole lot of scrutiny or criticism about um the number of ventilators and how germany are doing versus us or south korea or i mean there's so many variables involved in it and all that but i just yeah for the most part i just i'll, I'll maybe watch the five five o'clock briefing but not religiously um, probably, it's probably not healthy just to sort of obsess over it, is it? So you can Google just, good news to make yourself feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we never, I don't think we've ever really shared much good news, either, but good news doesn't really click, get many clicks, does it, or sell many papers? But well, if you yeah. Google New Zealand uh, virus, that'll make you feel better. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw something the other day actually that the the Countries with female heads of state have done miles better than the, than the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the males. I can well believe it. Yeah, empathy but, uh, versus ego. It's interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also I think there's there's a tendency in men to go, oh, "I'll be a divine," or oh, the sort of bravado or my spirit will will. Uh, oh, or, there's a tendency to think the virus is picking on them personally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's 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 Trump all over, though, isn't it? Like it is yeah. sort of his early um, his early response to it was just. Disgraceful, really. Bolsonaro is still there, I'm still denying it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, crazy. <laughs> There's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, is there any uh, go-to websites that you? Um... Yeah, I mean, that, uh, uh, another thing that I have, another area of interest is um, because I was a designer recently uh, until well, until about a year and a half ago, full time. And there's one called Fubiz dot net, which is French, I think. But that's, I mean. It, that, it's art and design and photography and architecture and all that kind of stuff. It's a bit like a, a colossal is another one, but it's not, and but I use I use Pinterest in the same way as that kind of thing. And you know, like it's, I, I find just looking at beautiful architecture or or photography or whatever, just inspiring or illustri illustration or design. I just find it. It's just that's a nice little place, road for your mind to go down without you know without being you know I'm, I'm not an architect and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not I'm not an illustrator, but. I still find it, you know, really you, interesting. 
do you construct your songs like a piece of architecture? Because I was thinking that Radiohead construct their music like pieces of like buildings in a way. Or is that just Yeah, I think I don't know. I think it's um you can look, you can I'm sure you can break it down. I think producers probably think and and and, and people that are very studious with musical theory and everything will go, oh, it needs to the next chord arrangement ought to be this or what but it's a bit it's a lot more natural and organic the way we do it anyway. Like it, it'll be David will have a drum beat, for example, and I'll, the intonation of his beat will bring something out of me in terms of the intonation of the vocal melody. And initially, I'll just have a melody, and then that will, then the the, the sort of lyrics will form form on top of that once I've found the mood of it or whatever. I mean, this period is, there's been some times where they sort of fallen out as complete things, but a lot of the time it's sort of you're building it bit by bit. Usually, we have a great verse. And then they struggle for a while to get a chorus and things like that. But yeah, it's not mathematical or anything like that. It's nothing, nothing too dry. Um, but yeah, I think the, I think the, from the, like a design perspective, like the, thematically and things like, you can be influenced by art and design and things. Like, I think, um, but it's probably more. It's more like the, the l- lyrical subject matter is probably more from the books and stuff like that. Really, sort of uh, the existential angst of my youth still comes through from <laughs> even all these years later so what about tv or are you doing a lot of tv doing box sets or? yeah yeah we did i mean we're like the netflix addicts like everybody else i saw the other day that uh disney plus have got 90 million subscribers straight away which is uh, tells, tells you something about the uh these times i think uh, the people like that organizations like that were really benefiting weren't they although the the uh, process of making new content is challenged because you know everything's been shut down it's obviously a big bank of stuff that's already been been out there um better call Saul, um is one that i've been watching a lot recently um which is a sequel to breaking bad which everybody knows about but, but i think both of those are amazing like the character development and the cinematography and the, the sort of symbolism in it and all and everything it's also you know reasonably intelligent stuff while still having action in it and everything else and I mean that it's a bit of a slow burn a slow better call Saul but it's really sort of paying off now where it's got to now um Ozark is another one um and then like Tiger King is like the, the meme generator of the moment in it like, <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know if you've seen that but that's yeah I mean it's a little bit you feel a little bit exploit, exploited watching that it's almost like watching um Benefit Street or whatever there was a there was a period in British TV recently where they were like demonization of people on benefits and it feels a little bit voyeuristic and like we're um laughing at sort of hillbillies basically um which i find a bit bit problematic but still it's so it's just it's addictive tv you know it's, it's just it's so 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 bizarre and extreme like without giving stuff away but this yeah. you know gun toting polygamists and target and and uh, mur- murder plots and all sorts of stuff going on it's it's mad um but yeah and then that I my mean, kids are into sort of disney stuff and all that kind of thing but yeah mm. that's, that's what i've been watching okay that's i think that concludes uh the stuff that cool we, yeah that's right great. yeah right, that's, that's what you got to great. do for the day <laughs> um well we've just got a treadmill in the house with uh, my wife wore me down because I, I was like oh we can just go out for a run or we can go cycling or whatever but she's uh she was adamant that we needed a treadmill so we've just assembled that i might have a run, have a run on that in a bit um, but yeah, nothing, nothing else. Might, might have a tinkle on the piano. But um, what about yourself? Have you got? Have you got any? You've got any other interviews today lined up? Or I'm going to do Edward Collins later. Oh wow, well, cool! I'm in. I'm in very, very, uh, very esteemed company. And, and uh, thanks for having me involved in it. Oh no, it's, everyone's good, aren't they? Well, it's oh, cheers, down, big bands. Just you just interview people. Got something interesting to say in it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cheers, man. It's never a league table, is it? <laughs> 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 yeah. So then I'll go out for a run after that. Round oh, cool, man. I found the little deserted corners. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. That, I think that's the thing with running around here is like uh, you somebody, do find that these people, somebody will be right be, beside you before you know it. And so yeah, it feels a little bit more I know, I hate dangerous. That. Yeah. I'm like a zigzag wanderer. I go right out in the middle of the road to avoid people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, Ace, well, thanks for that. Thanks. Nice for one, John. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, no, thanks, mate. I'll hear from you soon, somewhere.